was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast with Liz and Natalie. This episode is part two of Kelly Starry's birth story. So if you haven't listened to part one, go back to the episode before this and give it a listen. We'll start with a little recap of last week's episode. So enjoy. We were really in our little tiny European apartment. If we can survive in this tiny apartment, let's plan on doing van life. One month before we moved, I found out I was pregnant. Looking back, there was nothing that could have prepared me for the birthing experience that I went through. One week before my scheduled induction, my mom fell. It left her paralyzed. I was just a ball of stress. Like There was no way my, my birth with Stella was going to go smoothly. I was probably around like eight or nine centimeters. They kept checking me and I mean, kept checking me. After I think it was three hours of pushing, my doctor came in and was like, Kel, it's not happening. At some point during all of that, I had gotten an infection. All of a sudden, I'm in the bright white lights. I'm in the surgical room. And they were like, she's out. She's out. The whole time, she's screaming bloody murder. And they set her on my chest. And she just goes silent. I was going through convulsions and massive amounts of the shakes. And everybody was just saying, oh, that's hormonal. I called the ambulance. I just look back. And my husband is just sitting in the doorway as I'm being wheeled out on a stretcher and put into an ambulance with our four, five-day-old daughter in his arms. That was terrifying. Yeah. Like, to see him have to be like, do I do? Yeah. Like, me, I know I'm going to get help. But he, what? who's his help? Yeah. Where's his help? Yeah. And so at that point, you just go like fight or flight mode right so like i called my dad i'm like here's what's happening my dad's freaking out (laughs) like my dad's having him he's like okay i'll meet you at the hospital like i don't even know what he was doing but he was like i will meet you there my sister was like trying to figure out what's going on like meeting who can where do we go like my poor husband's at home just like i feeling helpless doesn't know because i'm like i don't want to take the car from you you have the baby Mm -hmm. and so I get to the hospital and they start running all these tests and they're like, you have a, a huge infection. It was in my uterus. And so I guess whatever antibiotics they did in when I was still there the first time um, didn't work. Yeah. And so they were like, OK, we're just going to start you on until we can get more tests done. Let's just start you on generic like general antibiotics. Mm-hmm. And the ambulance, they like, when they asked me, where do you want to go? I was like, well, let's just go back to the hospital that I gave birth from. Because they obviously like, it's, there's gonna, they'll have the most information on what's going on. And so we go back there and I'm in the ER and I like, because I went in an ambulance, I had, there was no wait time. I was, when you come in an ambulance, like you're in and you're given a room. Hmm. Um, And so, yeah, so... (laughs) Because that's what I was worried about, too. I was like, if I just show up at the AER, like, because I had just been through this with my mom oh, my, yeah. a week before that, a week and a half before that, my mom was just taken to the same ER in the same scenario, ambulance and all that stuff. So I literally, ooh, I literally just went through all of that. And so I knew if I take an ambulance, I'm in, I'm in there. Uh-huh. And so they start just doing the generic tests and they're like, okay, well, we're admitting you. And I was like, yes, obviously. (laughs) And um, so you'll be moved back up to postpartum Mm. and they're going, they'll take it from there. And so after probably a couple hours, like maybe two hours, not that long of a time, um, I was moved back up to postpartum and they were just continuing the general, general antibiotics. Two days go by and i'm i still have the infection oh my god and not only is it still there it has spread from my uterus to my c-section scar so it's getting worse (laughs) 
while and they I'm... were still just doing the same antibiotic. Yes. And so finally, this OB, who's not my OB, not a part of the practice, but they just an OB at the hospital, comes in and is like, what is happening? Like, we need to get you somewhere. Like, well, you cannot just be here forever yeah. trying to like, like, you are dangerously close to, I'm surprised I didn't get sepsis. Yeah. Like, they were like, you're dangerously say. close. We need to get you sorted we do not have the resources in our department to take care of you mm -hmm. so i'm going to call infectious diseases and they're going to come down and we're going to we're, you can stay in this room you can stay a part of the postpartum wing but we are no longer going to take care of you you will get your own nurse you will get ids resources and that was the first time anybody took my blood was when they finally got infectious diseases like, oh like a full blood, like mock up. Like they took, yeah. they took blood when I was down in the ER, yeah, yeah. but like did a full, ran all the tests, yeah, did all like, the scans, what all the stuff. Do yes, you have? Yeah. yes. And so I think they were just doing. The, I don't. I think it was the cat scans that they were like. But I'm also like. I'm trying to breastfeed. So this whole time, every three hours, oh, I'm, God, pumping. I'm pumping. I'm <laughs> pumping. That's three hours. Oh, oh my God. Happening. I'm trying to pump. That's oh, my God. <laughs> so, so then I'm also like, I'm trying to tell you, I'm like, I'm breastfeeding. So like, I can't do certain things and blah, blah, blah. I need to be aware of that when it comes to the antibiotics and all. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. All the things. What were you doing with the milk? Did um, you have like a fridge? Yes. So because I was in postpartum, they just took all of it. So I was just like stuck in like massive amounts of milk. But Jacob doing but soa. He was giving her formula. Okay. And so so she was starting on formula when she was at home with him. Thankfully you had some at home. I left. know, yeah. right? Right. So I don't know. I like at that point, it was just so fight or flight for both of us. Like he and and again, it was another like retrospect, like looking back, I'm just so think like he had such a bonding yeah, experience yeah. with her. He, he was had the, to do he it. He had Trial to. Trial by fire. Yes. <laughs> Talk about jumping into the deep, yeah. deep, deep end of the ocean, man. <laughs> like he just had for five days because i was at the hospital for another five days did he ever come up with yes someone? he was up there pretty much every day i think oh, um that's good and but we still had like our dog at home and so yeah. like he would we weren't supposed to do this they told us we couldn't do this but we did it anyway um <laughs> he would just like leave stella with me and i would take care of her at the hospital and then he would leave and go do the dog stuff and like get groceries and buy more formula and buy more diapers and do all the stuff. And, um, and it's so funny because like when people always say like, just let me know if you need any help. That was like, I hate it. I hated that sentence. But after this whole thing happened, because people kept telling me that and I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. Why do I, yeah. yeah, I can't use my brain power yeah. to tell you. Yeah, I'm like, you what see you... what's happening? Like, you think of something. Uh -huh. You figure it out. Like, yeah. of, like, you could have done anything to help. And I just felt like we, like, other than my immediate family, like, there were so many areas that were just, like, so dropped that I felt like, so, like, not only was I going through this traumatic experience with the birth then this traumatic experience with the afterbirth and then there was like this weird mental side of like do i have no support at all around me when i moved i lost contact with a lot of my friends mm -hmm. and it's not their fault it's not my fault you just drift apart it's a seven hour time difference or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's hard to keep those connections and keep your friends. And, um, you know, like, of course, I could have done a better job and 
they could have done a better job. It's just natural. But like, to me, I was also experiencing this profound like realization of like, where's my community? Like, maybe it's not here either. Mm -hmm. I moved back to have this experience. But like, is was that the right move? Like, would all of this have happened if I was there still? So it was like, nat- it was very natural and like, like, just seamlessly went into questioning everything and this depression and this like very um I always like to think that I have like I'm very good at looking at the on the positive side of things and the bright that and like even in this conversation you know like going through all of that but like my husband had the this ex- incredible experience with my daughter even though I was going through all this like yeah. like I'm really good at finding the positives And that was just a time where I just was like, I have to keep trying because it's really, really, really hard for me in this moment to try to find any positives. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to do this again. (laughs) Just makes sense. (laughs) Like, you know, that sucked. What, what, like all these realizations and all of these trauma and experiences. And I'm like telling people the story and people are like, that's not normal. I'm like, really? Like, oh, that's well, at least, you know, like, at least I know that other people aren't going through this. (laughs) Like, uh, try always trying to find the positives. Like, oh, at least other people don't have to deal with this because. That was that was really hard. That was really not fun. And and then isn't it just in the same breath how hard and terrible and difficult all of that was? This postpartum amnesia comes and you just forgot all of that happened. <laughs> you just forget everything. <laughs> and I'm so thankful that I decided like when I got back the second time from the hospital, the second round. Um, oh, when I got, actually, when I got back, the, um, I found out I was allergic to penicillin because they, I broke out in hives when I got back the second time. That was just, you know, it was just another thing. (laughs) Um, but I wrote it all down and I'm so happy that I wrote it all down because that really, I was actually like reading it today before I came in (laughs) because I was like, so many things happen and that amnesia just really like (laughs) knocks it out of you like i read something that that is like the it's natural selection like it happens to all of us because if it didn't we would stop having babies and yes and (laughs) the earth would not be populated (laughs) we would have disappeared as a human as the human race (laughs) if postpartum amnesia was not a thing Mm -hmm. because Six months later, we were like, "We sh- should we try again?" <laughs> no, that six months. Oh my god! I thought you guys just like accidentally got pregnant. Oh no, we did it on purpose. Oh, <laughs> and and it is all a little bit related because, as I told you, like I am my mom's only daughter, my only child, okay. and when she was going through her surgery and her accident and all those things, like that was really hard on me, knowing that like I was her only child, mm. I was the only one that could be there, yeah, to help her, uh-huh. and I had always wanted a sibling really close in age. I had half siblings and I have step siblings, but like I wanted like a full blooded sister or brother that was same age as me. I was always super jealous of the kids in school that had their siblings that were in school with them. Like I'm sure they were like, that's annoying. Like (laughs) I hate that. But I was so jealous of that my whole life. I wanted that so badly. And then when my mom had her accident, I was like, I have to like I I want a sibling for my kid and I want them to be close in age and if I have to go through that again it's worth it 
to know that not just one person will be in charge of everything that my husband and I like when we get hopefully you know it, when we get old and you ha- like there's not just one child having to take care of us like they can share that responsibility um with you know at least one other sibling mm-hmm. and so, so yeah mm-hmm. it was i had her in may and then in december we were like okay let's start trying <laughs> that's i guess <laughs> but we had never tried before and so Stella was an a-, a happy, beautiful, lovely, happy act, traumatic, <laughs> happy accident. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we had never tried before, so like I wasn't like <laughs> that birthing experience was birth control in itself for the first yeah. six months. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, and I've always been very in tune with my body and aware of like what's going on with it and I had always tracked my periods and so I knew about when I was ovulating and all this stuff and so so we're like okay well let's like starting in January whenever you we have our um your first ovulation like we'll try to get pregnant and literally like I know this is gonna sound insane But I could feel it. It was like three days later, I started cramping. Maybe even two days later. Like maybe even 24 hours. It was like so (laughs) soon after that I was like, there's no way. But I was feeling myself coming. Like I was cramping. There was no other reason for that because I wasn't ovulating anymore. And I was like cramping and my like had weird mucus changes and... And then, like, started getting really hormonal a week later. And then literally two weeks later, it was the day that I was supposed to start my period. That morning, I was like, let's just let's just take a test. (laughs) Because, like, I think that I could be with all the things that I've just felt in the last, like, two weeks. Yeah. I think it's very possible. How did you not take one sooner? I don't know. Well, I th- I think I might have been it came like right when I was cramping and I think it came back negative because it yeah. was like obviously it was mm. too early. So I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. Now I will just do the test. Um and I mean like <laughs> so I went to Walgreens. We were like on our way to a friend's house <laughs> to like celebrate the new year being over i hadn't seen him in a while so we were driving out there and so i was like let's just stop at walgreens because like i'm gonna drink a lot if this comes back negative (laughs) and not out of like sad because like yeah people have such a hard time getting pregnant Mm -hmm. that this is our first time trying i was like there's no way it's gonna happen so quickly Mm -hmm. Well, it did. It came back like immediately. <laughs> and I, and I, it's funny because I, like, the tests are just the little strips in Prague and Europe. Mm-hmm. They're, they were just the strips. So I, like, peed in a cup and then just, like, set it in. And that time was actually hilarious because I went through a whole weekend with my husband's parents realizing that I was pregnant because I hadn't had my period in, like, a week. And, I didn't even like it didn't even occur to me because that was just so out of the realm (laughs) of like any possibility (laughs) in my life at that point in time. And then I it like dawned on me that I was a a week late and I was never I was very regular. (laughs) And so I went through an entire weekend with my husband's parents knowing that I was like something was off and they drink a lot. (laughs) And so I kept having to like be like, no. No, I don't want a shot. Like, <laughs> no, I don't want that glass of wine. And his mom was like, are you okay? What's wrong? And I was like, oh, I just, like, I've been feeling kind of sick this weekend. And, like, I just, I'm trying to take a week off. Like, I'm trying to be, you know, like, stop drinking so much, you know? Like, I'm an alcoholic. No, I was trying to come up with any excuse in the book. But, like, if you're a woman... Who drinks pretty regularly, and all of a sudden you're like, "No thanks." Everybody's get the first thing people are gonna think of, like, "Oh, are you pregnant?" Like, that's how I told my mother-in-law. Yeah. And so, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, so, like, and so, and of course, I told my husband 
while we're going to his parents' house. And then, like, he was, we were spending the weekend with them. And so he's like, no, you're not. No. Like, total denial. <laughs> he's like, that's not possible. <laughs> like, it's not happening. And then I was like, okay, if I still haven't started my period by Monday, let's go take the test. And so we buy the test. I peed in the cup. I stick the thing in. And he's, like, reading the directions. And he's like, okay. It tell it says to wait f- five minutes. <laughs> and I looked at the test. I said, babe, we don't have to wait five seconds. It came <laughs> back immediately. Oh, yeah. Bright, like <laughs> bright double line. It was like, <laughs> baby, like we are pregnant. <laughs> and we were like, oh, well, okay. And that was, again, that was like a month before we were planning to move back to the city. So we were like, Whoa. <laughs> 180 yeah. gotta do all that so this time i'm like all right second time like i guess maybe like it takes a while i'm not sure i don't know it's like that time was such a wild experience like i don't know what to expect this time and so i like tried to in walgreens i'm like trying to pee on this stick and <laughs> it's, it's like, and i just I like I know it's gross, but it's the golden hour birth podcast. Like nobody's listening to this that doesn't want to know these details. I just yeah. peed everywhere. Like it's all over my hand. It's all over the stick, and it. And I'm like, so I'm like, oh no, what have I just done? So I'm like, trying to clean it up. I'm like trying to clean my hands. I like set it on the cat like little sink and let it just like sit and while i'm (laughs) cleaning the toilet seat and putting my hand and i'm like what is this why did i just do that and then i went back over and it says pregnant but like i peed over the whole stick so like in my head i'm like maybe i maybe like the control is off like maybe it's something weird like maybe it's just error like error (laughs) so i like go out to the car and i tell my husband what happened and he was like i don't think that's a thing (laughs) he was like i don't think it just like messes up just because you peed all over the wrong parts (laughs) i'm like well, yeah, there's like a control and you have to do it right. So if you don't do it right and you just pee all over this whole stick, surely it's going to mess up. And he's like, mm, OK, well, let's just you have another test. I'm like, yeah, I have another test. So we go to my friend's house and we're we're there and we're just hanging out and we're about to start drinking some wine. And so I'm like, OK, I'll just go to the bathroom really quick and like do it. Really <laughs> And so I'm in there and I wait the amount of time and it comes back and it says pregnant and I'm just like flabbergasted, like cannot believe. And I was like, by golly, I did feel it. <laughs> and I was like, I did. It is. that it? Wow. 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 And then I like start to do the math and I'm like, oh, Stella's still baby. Like, I'm like, she's like eight months at this point. And I was like doing the math and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot sooner than I thought it would be. But like, all right. Yes, we're so I like went out and told my friends, and they were like, Yeah, hey, like so. And they were, and she had, um, actually, my friend had a baby, like, I think it's like seven weeks after Stella. So we both had babies around the same age. So it, which it had just happened, we had all just given birth. <laughs> so she was like, I still have some non alcoholic wine from. <laughs> Pregnant two seconds ago. <laughs> so do you want some? It was terrible, but I was like, yeah, might as well. And so then my husband was pumped because then he had a DD. <laughs> there you go. That night, and you know, so it was just like absolutely crazy. And then you know, went from there. Oh, gosh. And then everything was the exact. My Sam's birth was the exact opposite of Stella's. 
Everything was planned. Everything was scheduled. I was not doing a vaginal birth again because that was the whole reason why I got the infection, had the issues, had the trauma, all that stuff. I was like, not doing that Mm -hmm. again. Yeah. My doctor was really great the second time around just being like, do you have any questions? No. Do you like, do you need anything from me? And I'm like, no, I did this two days ago. Come on. Like, let's just we're on to the next one, you know, like. And then um, we found the due date. Uh, we did calculated his due date. Well, at the time, we didn't know it was going to be a boy, but um, we did the due date. It was September 26th. Stella would have just turned 16 months or like was just about to turn 16 months when on his due, like right after his due date. Um, so a real quick turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> We weren't kidding when I was like, close in age, yeah. you know, yeah. like they were going to be Irish twins. Yeah. And the closer that we got to like, I had mentally prepared myself, I think. But the closer we got to giving birth to my son, um, the more nervous I got up for her, for my daughter, because I was like, she didn't choose this. How was she going to react? like did she get enough love did she get to be an only child for enough time did we get to spend all of our energy and all of our love and give it just to her because she's gonna have to share it after this point and that really worried me like I wasn't sure when you know when does jealousy form in in children and when does like um, I don't know, just pain and sadness. And when do you, do they become emotionally mature to be like, that stinks. Like, I don't like that. And so I had all these really big emotions of like, well, I was, I was very still scarred from obviously the first birth mm-hmm. and like, I didn't even realize the depression until the sp- kind of the fog finally cleared was when I stopped breastfeeding. I only made it three months with Stella pumping, exclusively pumping. Mm-hmm. Um, and by three months, I was like, Abs- I can't do this Not anymore. Only you made it. Well, yeah, I made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it three yeah. months through all of that yeah. exclusively pumping and was darn proud of it. Mm-hmm. And so, right. I mean, it was like I was told, I think because I'm also raising a, a one-year-old and I started my own um, like Instagram during that time. And so we were traveling a lot and doing all of these, really trying to soak in every moment with Stella that we could before we had this next baby. And so to me, that the first, I want to say eight months flew. I mean, we went to Europe during that time. Yeah. I went, to, yeah, I flew to Europe um and we were there for a month when I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> well, but, yeah. I know, I know. It's like it was Classic. huge. I know. <laughs> but like we just really I like soaked up every moment. I was like, I'm I'm not gonna sit down. I'm gonna try to just be involved and and it really made the pregnancy full eye by. But then after once I hit, I think I hit, hit like eight and a half months. I only had like maybe six weeks left or something. I was like, okay, like now we should probably prepare for this next baby. <laughs> um, maybe I should like start thinking about what they need. And and so then I was like, oh, I should maybe have like a baby shower and do like <laughs> like literally like six weeks before. This is the first time I had thought about any of this. <laughs> And so we ended up having, I think, like a little diaper party that on Labor Day weekend, because it was the only weekend that we did it like at the park in one of the shelters and yeah. only because nobody's like everybody's out of town on Labor Day weekend. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it's available on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> um, At the beginning of September, my due date was literally in like three, two weeks, three weeks after that. Um, And... 
we we still don't have a crib for Natalie. Natalie so kindly offered her <laughs> crib to us before we started recording. We still don't have a crib for Sam, um, but he's in a bassinet in our room. So, yeah. like, you know, I, I wasn't that worried about it, but, like, we really didn't think about it. <laughs> and then second once I, d- <laughs> yes, total second kid problems. And then when I did think about it, that was when all of those memories started bringing, coming back up. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh gosh, like, and then the anxiety starts getting in and I'm like, am I going to feel the way that I did after the last one? What if it doesn't go to plan? And my doctor was so reassuring. She's like, no, no, listen, we are doing it different. Mm -hmm. Like a scheduled C-section is completely different. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so I was like putting that faith in her, trust in her. Like, you know, like when I think about all the horrible things that happened before, it was all related to the vaginal birth. Mm -hmm. So the C-section was fine. And so if I just focus on that, then everything will be okay. And that's what I was like telling myself. So then like the anxiety of giving Stella a sibling, will she like him? Will she be okay with it? Like all of those thoughts start coming in and you're like, wow, gosh, like this is a big, a big thing and a big change. And yeah, like, am I ready for it? Are we ready for it? Is she ready for it? Because now like, She's so young. She can't tell me. Yeah. I have I have to just kind of feel it out and <laughs> see and kind of decide. And at that point, she also, like, she was with me full time. Like, I've been a stay-at-home mom since I gave birth to her. And she d- had a lot of separation. That was It's just that timing mm. is, like, massive for separation anxiety at that point. So I, then I'm worried about that. Um, my aunt, shout out to Aunt Pat. <laughs> she drove from Indianapolis to watch um Stella while we were gonna like we planned on her driving in town and watching Stella for the five potential days because I was <laughs> I was like, I'm I'm taking my time with this. Like yeah. I'm going to be there the full five days. I don't want to be rushed out of that hospital. Yeah. I after the last time, like, we are going to make sure everything is good yeah. until – so I, because I'm not coming back here. <laughs> like, I'm not coming back here. And yeah. I'm going to attempt to breastfeed. I learned from the la- first time, you know, like, I wasn't – nobody was – I, like, made sure I was, like, nobody is giving my child a bottle. Nobody is giving my child, like, anything that I have not okayed. Mm-hmm. That child is going to be going skin to skin as soon as we can. I don't, you know, like if it's not immediate, fine. But like as soon as we can, we're going to get them attached and we're going to try to start breastfeeding as long as I can get my life together. (laughs) (laughs) And so like I had, you know, like you have your expectations from the first time Mm -hmm. and it went so horribly. And I'm a big believer that like negative experiences Negative experiences are learning experiences and you can take that and you can dwell on it or you can learn from it. And so sure enough, like we like go in and we have everything's like scheduled. And so we go in early in the morning and I'm like, oh gosh, like I can't believe like it's he- it's finally <laughs> here. Like, wow, this is really happening. Everything went to plan leading up to it and then i just go in for the c-section then i have the (laughs) c-section um they and then i came out of the c-section and the only thing that was a little what interesting that didn't go to plan was i had the same reaction to the spinal of the c-section the this time as i did the first time so apparently i just have like my stepbrother's an anesthesiologist and he is he told me, you know, all the technicalities mm-hmm. and all the real terms of like, oh, you're just sensitive to da 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 and da 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 da. But like to me, my brain's like, right. I called Lidocaine candy cane for like a solid <laughs> six months. So um and so I again for 24 hours, 
after my C-section, was passing out, couldn't stay awake for more than five minutes, and was puking all day. But this time, my nurses were, because I told them, I was like, breastfeeding, I really want to give it a a good go this Uh time. I really want to try. They, every time I woke up or every time the baby cried, they put him on me and we, they would just, even if I was asleep, they would. And thankfully he was a phenomenal latcher, whether I was (laughs) holding him or whether the nurses were holding him or I was passed out or what he, we somehow managed to get him to have a pretty good latch, um, and he was just a thirsty boy. And so, like, <laughs> he was just, like, determined to get milk no matter what. And and I had good consultations with lactation consultants that time around. Um, and And my husband, for 24 hours, got to spend, like, all of his time just holding the baby. <laughs> Didn't have to share him with me one bit because I was passed <laughs> out. For 24 hours so he just got that bonding time and got to hold him and just got totally a totally different experience and yeah. the experience that I wish I could have had that first time but I think I only got it the second time because I had the, that experience the first mm-hmm. time yeah like I, I had to go through all of that to have such a special experience the second time yeah and and then you looking back, you're like, oh, wow, that's even less normal than I thought it was. Like, because now I'm like able to get up and walk around after like a day. Yeah. And then like my pain isn't I was like at twos and threes and um like totally fine. And I was like starting to wean off of the medication after like two, three days and, you know, the normal things. Yeah. Yeah. That you realize, like, oh, this is how it should have been the yeah, first time. Yeah. Like, but you had nothing to compare it to. But you had nothing to compare it to, yeah. so you just don't know. Yeah. And so brought home brought home Sam, and Stella just loves him. <laughs> they love each other, which Aww. is crazy to see, like, because th- so now he's three months, and he smiles at her and the way he looks at her like he knows she's his big sister and like she just like wants to tickle him all the time (laughs) and like and it it's in this really interesting like part of her development too because she's now starting to like mimic the things that are happening around her and she's starting to like develop speech and develop emotions and toddlerhood <laughs> is bananas <laughs> i mean dramatic <laughs> is like putting it kindly <laughs> but it's also so fun because she's a real person yeah <laughs> she's a real person and she takes her baby dolls and she puts a burp cloth on her shoulder oh, and she throws her baby God. dolls over her shoulder and burps her baby oh. dolls and the first time I saw that, I just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just lose it because you're like, she's watching me. She loves it. She's like practicing and she like always wants to hold Sam and she like wants to feed him and she wants to just like be around him all the time. Every time. So like my husband gets up with Stella and does her morning routine with her since we have started having Sam. And um, while I, because obviously I'm up all, all night with Sam, which <laughs> cool, but he does all that. And so I always come out in the morning before he goes to work and come out and I take the baby out. And every morning it's like clockwork. She's like eating breakfast in her high chair and she can hear my door open and she knows that it's both of us. And she just turns around in mid breakfast and just goes, hey. Oh. Hey, <laughs> and just like greets him with such a big smile. And like, I don't think it's for me. Like, I really <laughs> think she's greeting the baby. Yeah. Like, Probably. she might be happy to see me, but I'm oh. pretty sure she's infinitely more happy to see him oh. when we come out in the morning. Oh, yeah. Right. How old is she now? 
So she's eight, 19 months now. Yeah. It's a fun age. It is a fun age. Gosh, it's a dramatic age, but like, uh-huh. it's fun. I mean, it, it really is yeah. fun. Like, the rate in which she's just like absorbing everything yeah. is like fascinating to me. Yeah. yeah. We'll and just turning two on Thursday. Oh, my God. And she, her speech is just like exploded. And yeah. I'm like, it's so cute. It's so it's cute. So horrible. I love it. Yeah. I've known this movie and like take off this past like few months. And mm-hmm. It's been really cute. Yeah. Well, for us, so Funny. Stella, our kids are learning two languages. Oh, yeah. Because my husband's native language is Czech. Yeah. And so he only speaks to our kids in Czech. Oh, that's, that's so really cool. It is. It's <laughs> so cool. I'm like, you guys are already so much cooler than I will ever be. <laughs> like, I love that and for I you. You're pretty cool. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Well, they're <laughs> infinitely cooler. Yeah. And the fact that they're going to be native, well, I guess I don't think they're native, but fluent speakers in two different languages from like the get go, the mm-hmm. start. I just love that for them yeah. because seeing so much of the world and seeing how much the rest of the world can speak multiple languages and I how, know. you know, <laughs> like. Too. And how how much they you it it is such a valuable tool to be able just to communicate with other people, mm-hmm. and they will be able to do that. Thanks, mom and dad. Oh, uh, they could have done yeah, that. To me. Right? Yeah, right. It's not their fault. My it, mom could have spoken Serbian at home. Oh, she did. <laughs> well, uh, you know, to each their own decisions. You know, but like we we knew pretty because we knew we weren't gonna be in the states forever. Yeah. So moving back, like it's just like. Yeah, well, we're going to move back and they're going to want to probably be able to communicate. Um, Exactly. And so, like, making sure. And it it was hard at first, I think, for us to, like, navigate that and figure out, like, how are we going to do it? Because my husband also really likes when I can understand because I I don't I even know very little Czech, like, knock on me for sure. But, like, I should know more. (laughs) Um, But. And I'm learning now that he's speaking to her, like I'm learning through that mm-hmm. process, which I love. Like yeah. I, my my check is better now than it was when I lived there. <laughs> I know. It's insane. How many do you get by four years? Well, I lived in Prague, which is the capital, and everybody speaks okay. English. Okay. So like everybody speaks English. Yeah, they'll they'll, right. they'll tell you that they don't, and then they'll go into a full blown conversation with you in English. <laughs> so um and they love practicing too they do love practicing and like i knew it i knew vocabulary words so like i know i can like read a menu and tell you what the food that i want to eat on the menu and then i can order it with the server that's very important like (laughs) can i get a beer please (laughs) was really good at that yeah i had a lot of practice with that um and like navigating the grocery store it's the same kind of thing it's the same words grocery stores and restaurants have the same words you know connected like (laughs) do you want some peppers and onions and chicken on your on a plate yes and so like i could do that i could do those things um it was like just the conversation part of it that yeah. was just so mm-hmm. intimidating to me and like so impossible. And so now it's like really fun to practice like baby check and, <laughs> you know, and, and we watch so many like we listen to songs and we listen to stories and we watch shows and check. And now Disney Plus has gone to the truck public. So now a bunch of Disney movies and um, oh, all the stuff oh. that's on Disney Plus you can dub in Czech. That's cute. And so now we just like watch Frozen in Czech all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, right. And so it it it's fascinating to me that they get to kind of have that experience. And and so now, but with the speech thing, I'm like, I you're gonna be talking behind my back. I know it. And like <laughs> and and all of her words kind of come out in this weird like chinglish yeah. like in <laughs> mess and so i'm like i can't wait until i can like actually understand what you're saying but we'll get there eventually i'm not worried about it because yeah. i'm like two languages it's got to be tough to like departmentalize and of course they're like so good at it at that age yeah. but 
but it still has to make they have to make the connection she has to eventually get to the point where she's like okay if i'm speaking to my mom i speak in english if i talk to my dad i mean that takes some time so but it's fascinating it's so fascinating this age yeah and then little sam sam (laughs) babies are so easy babies are so like for me babies are so easy it's the toddler phase that i'm like what is this ditto this is new Mm -hmm. not (laughs) oh let's like can we like slow it down a bit (laughs) can we just sit for a second <laughs> no. <laughs> right no i'm in so much pain like oh, I'm, I'm not just... i'm not really in pain i'm just like can i just like not be pregnant yes first? yes and you'll get around. there and you'll get there uh, and it'll <laughs> it'll be wonderful like everybody was like how are you feeling after i had sam i was like great <laughs> I was like, I'm not chasing a toddler being pregnant anymore. Yeah. That and like getting on the floor with her and getting up off the floor <laughs> with her. And like had, I did this amazing thing where uh, she has like a really big bedroom. She like takes up what should be the master. I'm, I'm that person <laughs> where I gave the master bedroom like to my child pretty much. It's not really, but essentially. And um, so she has like her room and her play space all in one area. And mm-hmm. I put a mattress on the floor Love it. and just laid there for like the last six weeks of my pregnancy. <laughs> like that's nice. just where I was. I just laid on that mattress in her room and was like, this is it. <laughs> I have reached peak <laughs> professional pregnancy with a toddler. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could do that, but Wes just like wants to bombard himself. Boys and girls are different. On the mattress. I think yeah. He, like, needs it like at an angle so he can like ram himself yeah. into the mattress. <laughs> yeah. I think like little boys and little girls are different. Are. I think boys are a little more rambunctious. Costella's pretty like I mean, she's getting to that, but, like, she also still listens to me when I'm, like, don't do that. She likes to climb, but I'm, like, that if you fall backwards and you're going to hit your head and blah, blah, blah. And she, like, understands that. And she's, like, okay, I need to be a little more cautious as I'm doing this climbing. <laughs> Even though all the little boy toddlers that, like, I know are, like, who cares? Like, <laughs> Crack my skull open. <laughs> Mine are like the opposite, though. Arthur's so yeah. hairful. Ooh, and maybe like, and Vivian is just like full on. Maybe it's also be like a field hockey player. Yeah, like, I don't even know <laughs> where she came from. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So funny. Do it. I think that's also like a second child thing too. Yes, I think yeah. like they are fearless. Yes, I've yes. heard that. Very true. I've heard that. That's why I'm like I have a. I have a daughter who's very cautious and very like rule follower and she like likes things to be clean and she like if she'll have a bowl of like bananas or something and a banana will fall out of the bowl she'll put it back into the bowl and then eat it out of the bowl <laughs> like she can't eat it from the place that it doesn't belong <laughs> it has to be in its proper container and then she can eat it like that is my child I wish I could show you what it looks like when Wes eats shredded cheese at our house. He, like, doesn't even close his mouth. He's just like, and then it just, like, boom. <laughs> it's all over the floor. Yeah. Stella so Stella's very dainty in the, like, she's like, oh, no, I'm going to put it back in the bowl. And then I, and, like, she'll, I am kid you not, when I take her plate, when she's all done, if she has, like, scraps on the tray, she will put them back in the plate on the plate for me to take it away i know (laughs) but there is no way i'm getting two of those no No No. way and i think for every in like moment that she's like that i know sam is gonna be like just as far on the other end of the spectrum (laughs) like that is my lot in life although like They do because they say like, oh, if you have one good baby, like your second one's going to be. Oh, and um, Stella and so far, Sam has been just as good of a sleeper as Stella. Mm -hmm. Both of my kids. I think it's hereditary. Sleep is is very important to me. (laughs) Yeah. You'll have a good sleeper. (laughs) Yeah. So I and and everybody keeps saying (laughs) they're like, oh, well, it's not going to be that. And I'm like, no. Sleep's important. We're going to, and sure enough, like, I think that so far 
he has taken after his big sister in that. And I am hashtag thankful. <laughs> Cannot <laughs> stress that enough. <laughs> yes. And That's so good. thank God you made your Instagram traveling with babies. I know. It's like I was planning this. Well, like I was Too thinking much. that was like my that was my announcement. It was like I my Instagram is now officially we are now officially traveling with babies. Yes. <laughs> so before I was just a fraud. And <laughs> and truthfully, it was just because traveling with baby was already taken. <laughs> Somebody already had that Instagram. So I was like, okay, traveling with babies. <laughs> and then sure enough, and that was, oh my gosh, it'll be. So I started my Instagram on January 1st. 2022 and so we're coming up on one year oh my wow. god that's TWB awesome. yeah yay I'm yeah. so excited thank you so I don't know much about your Instagram yeah. so tell me about it yes so so obviously like through our experiences traveling has been like such a big deal and I mentioned it earlier like I always thought I was too selfish because I love to travel to have children and to have babies and because they always say like, oh, you need to settle down and you need to like, you can't do everything that you like to do <laughs> when you have a kid. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, well, I guess I'm never having a kid. Cause, like, <laughs> this is something I like to do and I'm not willing to give it up. And so I think also a part being in the hospital for almost two weeks and then getting out and being like, I've missed the first two weeks of my child's life. Like, let's go. <laughs> let's go somewhere. Let's do something. We were out everywhere. And Stella was so easy to take out. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. to her credit, like, if she was, if we were dealing with, like, a colic baby or she wasn't sleeping or she wasn't, you know, like, those make it infinitely harder to take your baby out. Yeah. And so, to her credit, she she wasn't. She was such an easy baby that slept everywhere we took her. And so we were like, well, well, then we can, we can go out, we can do things. And we take her everywhere. Mm -hmm. We took her absolutely everywhere. So then we just started like doing the big traveling because we could, we, we started small. We did like little day trips and then we were like, okay, well, let's spend a weekend in Nashville and then let's go to Florida and then let's do New York for Christmas. <laughs> And in the process of me doing the research um, to find out what I needed to, like, logistically travel to New York mm -hmm. with a six-month-old, um, what was the public transportation? Like, I've taken all kinds of public transportation, obviously, with traveling. And – but, like, what does that look like when I have a stroller? Because mm -hmm. I liked – Stella was very much a sleep in the crib in the dark with the sound machine. She was not, like, a sleep-on-me type of baby. Mm -hmm. Um, she needed to have her environment. And I was like, okay, well, when we were in Florida, we can just go back up to the room and she can just sleep in the room. But in New York, New York is huge. Yeah. I want to see New York. If I'm there, I don't want to be going back to the, like, I can mm -hmm. do literally nothing in the span of like two, three hours time. So hopefully she's just going to be able to do it on the fly. But how do I do that? Like, mm -hmm. what does that look like for us and for her? And I need to, like, figure out how to do this. And I've heard nightmares about the New York subway system. And so how are we going to get around? Like, how much are Ubers? Are they really expensive? Yes. The answer is yes. Very mm -hmm. expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then a car seat. Yeah. Like, and then yeah. a car seat. <laughs> like, are we going to bring the car seat with us? Or, like, we're not going to use it for the whole time so like yeah, what, what does that look like? like yeah yeah okay, exactly. let me install this real quick yeah exactly <laughs> and so what how are we gonna do all this so in that process of trying to navigate that i was like there are no resources mm -hmm. <laughs> like, i'm having a really hard time finding this information mm -hmm. anywhere and like i can find like okay here's information about the new york subway system here's information about like uh 
bringing your car seat through the airport. Here's this. Here's this. But there was no place that it was just like all in one spot. Mm-hmm. And I think there is a million and a half blogs on the internet about what you should see when you go to XYZ, yeah. when you go to New York for Christmas. Yep. Here's all the things that you want to see while you're here. But like, what I want to know is how to do that. Like, how do I logistically go visit that thing? And then how do I do it with a baby? And then how do I do it with a stroller? How do I do that there? How do I do that here? And so I just, I started blogging. I started writing it all down and I created the Instagram because I love like those education based Instagrams Mm -hmm. where I'm like listening to hours of Carrie Locker's story to just figure out like what one piece of information that I need to know. (laughs) But like, but I do, I just sit there and I just learn and I absorb so much. And I, and I actually really loved that was like through all the videos and the reading of the books, like Instagram was where I felt like I was really absorbing the most Mm -hmm. about this new phase of life that I was going to enter because it was just your bite sized chunks of information it wasn't overwhelming it was easily digestible and it was fun Mm -hmm. and it was like social media which is what i love you know and so i was like well i could do that Mm -hmm. you know like i i have a background in writing travel content i have a background in social media management i have all the things that i can get and education and teaching and I can just combine them all and maybe do it myself. And so, so I started it on January. It was like, I mean, it was like a very, we like got back from New York for Christmas, like right before Christmas. And by January 1st, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I, I thought about it for like two weeks. I wrote like a couple, I wrote um, a blog post for every day the first week. So, like, I think there were seven blog posts that first week because I was like, well, I need to get some content mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. Um, And really, like, write about what I just kind of experienced and what are probably going to be the frequently asked things. Um, And then from there, I released a new blog post every single week until I had Sam. So, like, it was something like 30, I think 30 something. That's amazing. Wow. Blog posts. Um. Yeah, from so. January until September, and now I've like slowed. Obviously, I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm like <laughs> still. Leave. Yeah, I, it's my maternity <laughs> leave. Yeah, I am now. I'm like raising two kids, so <laughs> it's like it's fun, but got other things. But I'm still uh-huh. obviously the Instagram is still has been growing like exponentially, and it's been so fun for me to have that creative outlet because I. I needed it. I needed something to focus on for myself mm-hmm. because as a stay-at-home mom, like, it's 24-7 the kids, yeah. the babies. There yeah. is absolutely no point during the day of any day, of any week, of any month that I get to, like, leave and go focus on something else unless I plan to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and say, like, I have to, I have to clear my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah of just babies all the time yeah. and that and some people don't need that but for me i needed that yeah yeah and so that has kind of been my my outlet and my creative outlet and my community that i've yeah. kind of built for myself in what i felt like was kind of losing my own here mm-hmm. i've created this new one mm-hmm. And that one's for me. And it's all with like-minded people, all that want to travel with their babies and experience new things. And I get to help them do that. And I feel like really honored that people like trust in me to do that and to help them and to kind of like take my advice and it work out for them. Like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's really special. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are going to Mexico. Yeah. When are you going We're to We're taking our first family trip um, in April. Ooh, we're going to Mexico at the end of January. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> but yeah, it's like four months. These... <laughs> I was like, four months. Yeah, that seems awesome. like enough time. <laughs> God, there's still, 
baby. That's like easy. Yes, that's <laughs> it. That was <laughs> my thought exactly. Yeah. I'm more worried about traveling yeah. right now. My focus is what are we doing with Stella? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then what are we doing with Sam? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the logistics. I'm like, okay, if we get a shuttle, because I'm doing all inclusive. Yes. We went oh, for yeah. my birthday 100%. <laughs> last year and I, it wasn't, I didn't, we didn't take the kids. Yeah. I did like our own thing. Mm hmm. I'm like, if we're going with the kids, we're doing all-inclusive. Yes. We're doing a place with a kids club. Mm-hmm. And they have babysitters yeah. and nannies. Yeah. And like, yeah. But yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm bringing a car seat for Vivian, mm-hmm. 100% mm-hmm. for the airplane. Yeah. But then Arthur's going to be like four and a half. Oh, no, just four. Yeah. And then, yeah, do you put the car seat in the shuttle? Like, mm-hmm. I there's like all these different things that I'm like, up the like, I don't, I don't know. Well, what do I do with these shameless things? plug. <laughs> I have these new consultations. <laughs> I'll let you have a consultation for free since Ooh. you let me come on your podcast. <laughs> uh, but that's my favorite thing to do is like problem solve with people. Uh-huh. That's like why I start. And now it's getting to the point where I have so many people messaging me that I just can't do it anymore. Like, I can't get to all my messages. Uh-huh. It's impossible. And so awesome. now I have these, I've started consultations at the new, starting in January, um, where people like you pay 20 bucks and you get me for 30 minutes and I will go through any question. Um, if you tell me in advance that you want me to do like particular kinds of research, I will do research. I will tell you like, what shuttle services you can take if they have car seats available. What are the car seat laws in Mexico? Like, what do you need awesome. to know? <laughs> and I will do all of that because that's my favorite part. That's of awesome. The, that is such a needed service. Well, yeah. well right? I'm like, yeah, Googling. Constantly. And, and you also have like, <laughs> I have the background of having to do it so many times before that I know like the little trip, like tricks of yeah, things yeah. that you can look for. But then I also have my community. Uh-huh. So if I'm not sure, like, I have people yeah, from all across. over the world that yeah. are following like my my f- from what I can tell I think I have a very very small percentage that are actually in St. Louis. Most yeah. people are completely spread out because it's such a like you could be from anywhere and you're going to be traveling with yeah, your baby. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So like I can reach out to people. I can just like send a little message like, hey, anybody from Mexico City that needs to know this information or like I have somebody that needs this help. Do you can you do some local stuff for me? You know, like building that community only makes the resource more like stronger. Yeah, and sure. and so that's like, amazing. That's yeah, so cool. So yeah. that's my favorite part, though, is to actually like plan with people like. Yeah. <laughs> Here's exactly what you're doing. And so, like, let me help you do that. I love it. Because, yeah, it's so fun. Because I love, that's my favorite part. I love planning trip. Uh-huh. That's, like, my favorite. Like, the trip itself is fun, but the planning, yeah, planning. part of it, I'm, like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, I always, like, create fun. my little spreadsheets <laughs> and, like, yeah. do all the stuff. And my husband makes fun of me because he's, like, another spreadsheet? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, and I'm, like, yes. We're going to be organized. We're going to have all of our details and our contact listed. <laughs> we need it. We, this is how we need it. We're, you know, in case of emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> so people That's can find fun. you at traveling. Yes, at traveling.with.babies. I-E-S. And that is, do you have a website too? I do. www.travelingwithbabies.net. Oh. It's there. Yeah. Pretty easy. That's that's the thing. It's like, what would you Google? Yeah, I would go- uh-huh. Google traveling with babies. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, there I am. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add for like your stories or? I don't know. I th- I mean, like you get wrapped up in it, and you're always like, I'm sure I missed like a million other key points, but well, I do yeah. want to ask. I like, yeah. Your pain that you were having with Stella at like eight, nines, and tens, like, yeah, throughout the five day stay. Uh huh. Where were you feeling that pain? Like in the incision? Uh, hush. That's a great question. I'm gonna say, <laughs> like, right, postpartum amnesia. I really can't, <laughs> can barely remember. 
I think it, yeah, I think it was in, it was in my like uterus. Oh. So it was like that pain. It was like it, within me and like the, because I, I don't want to say it was like the vagina because it wasn't really there. Yeah. The pain was, yeah, like inside and just like. Like, did you feel like. And the nauseous? incision and. Maybe, maybe, but like to me, I just remember it just like pain. Like I couldn't walk. Yeah. It could. It was just like so painful. It was like an all-encompassing, like whole body shutting down pain. Yeah, and just like that's exactly what your body probably was doing. Yeah, yeah, like shutting down because it didn't know how to. Yeah, I think so. Pain. Probably it, like the worst flu, but like in your uterus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it really like with it just within your muscles and everything just hurt. Yeah, infections yeah. are rough. Yes, yeah. yes, it was yeah. not fun. It's what were they doing for your fevers while you were in labor? Um, hmm. I think I was just getting like, gosh, I don't even know at this point. I think they were just giving me. But like I, I broke because I was taking Motrin, mm-hmm. and so I think it was just the Motrin mm. that was just. Hmm. I'm just kind of like circling yeah. back. I know. I know. I know. We're like just talking about traveling with babies. No, I know. It's I'm okay. Like, no, no, no. I'm glad. You're, I'm glad you're. <laughs> no, this is good. This is like that's the thing. Like I, it's so hard to like remember all of those details. So like I don't even think about it until you ask. But um, yeah, I. I think it, the because I was taking the Motrin for the C-section. Yeah. And so that was what was holding down my fever because it's 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. And so my fever was going down taking that. Mm. And that was also masking the pain. Like I actually thought it was the Percocet was the main thing that was like hiding everything. But it ended, it actually was the Motrin more than the percocet makes sense yeah Yeah. because that was the percocet's just the pain yeah the motrin's what's also bringing my fever down making inflammation like say the inflammation is yeah you can actually get up at yeah 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 and so so that was and of course they're always like just get up and walk around (laughs) and even with sam i was like come on yeah like don't worked, tell me that. <laughs> I worked on like a postpartum wing and like that was all like yeah. that we would say is like, yeah. get up and walk around. Yeah. yeah. When well, my bowels weren't moving, yeah. which is just actually just a thing like because my mom actually told me that that is a thing for her too. After the medication, like when you're trying to get your bowels like moving again, um, hers were really slow after her surgery. And I was like, oh, well, mine were also really slow. And I was... No offense to the nurse, my wonderful nurse that took care of me the second time. But I was like, if you tell me to get up and walk around one more time, just give me the poop medicine. (laughs) Because I ended up having to, because the first time around, I ended up needing a suppository because I still hadn't pooped after like 10 days or so. uh, It was like a week later after. It was a whole week later. That was what it was. A week later. I still hadn't pooped. And that was when I was back for the infection and everything. And they were like, we need to get it out of you. Like, and I was, they were like, why did you even leave without having poop? And then sure. And this time too, they let me go. I still hadn't pooped. I asked for a suppository because of what happened the first time. I was taking laxatives and stool softeners the whole Mm -hmm. time, but I still hadn't pooped. And then I was like, can somebody just give me a suppository? Because if I leave here, like, I'm not going to, what am I going to ask my husband to stick a <laughs> pill up my butt? No. And so I was like, I'm, I need it. And she just told me to get up and walk around more. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that was my only feedback to the hospital when they called me like a couple of days later. I was like, listen, you guys did a great job compared to the first time. But the, my only feedback is that the nurse wouldn't let me take the suppository, and I just need to. Po- I still haven't pooped. I was like, I pooped like on the phone with them, and they were like, Oh my god, oh my god. So I was, 
you know that's important Mm -hmm. that's a very important milestone after you have give birth yeah you gotta poop yeah you gotta poop you gotta do the poop but take the stool softeners and you you said that you did too which i'm like oh i was taking stool softeners i was taking the miralax i was doing all of it and so what i ended up doing it took a while i think i it still ended up taking like a week maybe even longer and i was like constant i was taking like stool softeners I was taking Miralax and drinking the apple juice like co- constantly for like three days, and then I yeah. finally was able to like oh my God. after like three days of lax yeah, <laughs> stuff. Well, antibiotics was, will just fuck you up. Oh yeah, completely. And yeah, then you're probably dehydrated. Oh yeah, and for sure. I mean, the the, all, all of that. the things, all of the things, <laughs> but it happened. Oh a, it happened eventually, but who? One. Last question. Yes, give me all. <laughs> Do you remember what the antibiotic that finally actually worked was called? No, mm-hmm. I was on like a cocktail of them in mm-hmm. IV form mm-hmm. when we were at the at the hospital still, and then um, they gave it to me, like gave me a pill. They finally got it slightly under control, and then they were like, "Okay, we feel comfortable enough discharging you." Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, so they gave it to me in a pill and it was a penicillin oh, and, oh and nice. yeah, <laughs> and it was after I left in the pe- the penicillin form, um, that I broke out knives the next day <laughs> oh and called my doctor and I was like, something's wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this is a joke. This has got to be a joke. I'm like I'm pretty sure I'm having an allergic reaction to something, and um and then I, so I, the nurse like called they they were like okay come in now like yeah. come in right now, and I was like and thankfully I live like two minute drive from my doctor <laughs> so like I was like I will be there don't even like don't even hang up the phone I'm on the way <laughs> and so I like walk in and like I like took my top because of course trying to breastfeed trying to pump and so it's painful and I took like my I just had my sports bra on and it's like red and bumpy though my whole chest wow my whole chest down to like my belly button and that's the only part that was just swollen and red and hides everywhere wild and there she was like i'm pretty sure you're allergic to penicillin and i was like good to know (laughs) interesting that you find that out at 29 years old 28 years old yeah how old i was at the time i don't know (laughs) like just bananas and so so then this this time it, it was in my report like Oh, yeah. oh, you're allergic to penicillin. Like, do you know what kind? Because then that's like, what, you know, pain medication do we give you with the C-section? That's a whole other thing. And I was like, I don't know. I just learned this two days ago. Like, <laughs> I didn't know that that was even a thing in my life. I, for the longest time, I didn't think I was allergic to anything. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm like, oh, I'm allergic to penicillin. But not all penicillins because they gave me like... They were telling me there's another thing that they usually give you during C-sections that's closely related to penicillins. And if you're allergic to penicillin, then you're likely allergic to that. But they gave it to me the first time and I didn't have a reaction to it. So they were like, so we're going to give it to you again. <laughs> For the best. I was like, okay, well, hopefully I'm not allergic to it. <laughs> and I wasn't. So like, I'm like, let's just keep it penicillin <laughs> and just call it a day. We don't need to get technical like the liquid version's okay and the pill version's oh, not. Boy. Let's just, we're just going to blank it. Mm. All penicillins allergic. So, uh, uh, right? So then they put me on, I don't know, something else. And then that ended up working, I think, like, oh, it was on my chest, my hands, and my feet. But, like, everything else was fine. It was so weird. Yeah. yeah. And then after a couple days, that cleared up. And then just so weird and it's a lot to go through it's a yeah. lot wow. it is a lot yeah. and i'm very thankful that i am we don't we don't know if we're done for sure we i'm like 
pretty I know I don't want to be pregnant for a really long time. <laughs> take a break. <laughs> so we're definitely going to yeah. take a break. We're definitely going to take a break for sure. Um, but we'll see, we'll see if we're done or but if we move back to Europe, it'll be a whole new experience because we're planning on moving back probably sometime next year. And so that means any future children we would have, we would have there, mm-hmm. which will be, you know, a, a whole new, yeah. a whole new have to come adventure. Back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one will have to be unfilled. We need a foreign hospital Ooh. story. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, so, so, all right. So, okay. So I have, have to have, to. now I have to have another one. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next spreadsheet. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I, so pros and cons. <laughs> Did you know Benjamin Franklin came up with the pros and cons list? Genius boy. <laughs> so many things, you know, electricity, pros and cons list. Yeah. Like I use them all the time. Right? <laughs> like, really, we owe so much to Benjamin Franklin. That's a whole other that's podcast, really, though. That's, like, a yeah. po- that's a different podcast. Like, that's a different podcast. Drunk history. <laughs> <laughs> I like that show. Yeah, really I love funny. that show. I was a history teacher, so like I know I have all kinds of weird random history facts in my brain. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Well, right. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Yeah. Very sweet. <laughs> yeah. I know. Is this like is it okay if you have a two hour long podcast? Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. We'll probably, we'll probably split probably. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm like having like this realization, like every single time that somebody shares a crazy story, mm-hmm. I'm like, that one was the craziest. Yeah. And I'm like, there's just like, everyone is so fucking different. Yeah. 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 And like, that's like why we have this. It's just yes. To give everybody their own space. Yeah. And like sharing this. And mm-hmm. that's yeah. exactly why you created this. Yeah. And I love that because I love, I think like we were talking when you first kind of like, you were like, I'm starting this podcast. Yes. Yeah. And I'm starting this Instagram, and then they got to shut the Instagram down <laughs> twice. <laughs> so sad. So weird. <laughs> what? What? Do that? I don't understand. But they were like, "Oh, that was heartbreaking." Yeah. And they're like, "Don't even try to contact us." They've never oh, emailed Inst- me back. I mean, Instagram is the worst. <laughs> if something happened, like they it, re- they, they are. They, they are. Fuck. No, they don't. They don't care. <laughs> no, Mark Zuckerberg, no. like. They really, truly are not helpful by in, in any means. Yeah. I'm, like, terrified of something, like, happening to that. I mean, I have everything backed up and saved, but it's, like, it's still, like, I put yeah. so much effort follow? into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, but, like. You kept having to be, like, JK, this is our new Yeah. Instagram. No, do, yeah. How many times do you just be, like, actually go follow this one? <laughs> actually go follow this one? We're just, like. We're having our own. Yeah. 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 And so, (laughs) like, we were talking about it, and I was just like, I love hearing birthing stories because all of them are so different. Yeah. And, like, you learn so much. To me, there is no greater, like, indication of who a person is than to go through that experience and then how they tell that story to others. I just, like, find it endlessly fascinating and then to like have my own story and be able to I find like share that with other people and then they can they're like oh wait so like that actually did happen to me and that's not normal like maybe maybe I've come to my own realization of my own birth story and uh, I just think like it's so special what you can like provide for everybody else so yeah I love that (laughs) <laughs> my Sam keeps telling me I need to like have like a mom circle and like do all of that and yeah I'm like well this is the start of it yeah this is the yeah, start of my mom circle yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree yeah. <laughs> special Fun. yeah well thank you so much again it was great hearing all of it enlightening yeah. yeah and I haven't talked about it in a while so it's nice to rehash some of that you know rehash the drama you know <laughs> why go to therapy when i can talk on a podcast yeah. right <laughs> it's free yeah this is, this it is sure therapy. is this is my therapy i agree <laughs> talking it out is therapy sometimes yeah. you know yeah. like just going over it and just having someone be like wow that sucked 
Yes. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I love this. Thank you. I'm so glad I got to come over. I like that you do it like late enough at night that like babies I can come. Asleep. Babies are sleeping. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. babies are sleeping. And All then I think so. Between yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three of us. Right. And then and then we can do it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We'll we'll link your socials. Yes. And um, everything. Perfect. So. Perfect. 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 Yeah. yeah. Feel free to reach out to Kelly if you want a consultation. Oh yeah. Yeah. And details are on my Instagram. You know. Yeah. Perfect. All the details, everything you could ever want to know about me and my Instagram. <laughs> also, it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you feel so inclined, rate and review our podcast and give us a follow. And we'll just see you next week. Yes. Thank you.